Good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA on the 5th of August, 2024. Out here feeding the deer and declaring the name of Jesus Christ before men. Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Creator of the universe, the Lord God. Last night I couldn't sleep too much, woke up about midnight, and I wrote down a few things, nothing special, but I will read it to you kind of uh, this was last night almost midnight can't sleep tropical storm Debbie coming Mount Etna erupting I think God is trying to talk to me I'm trying to listen. Maybe it's just that I can't sleep. Nothing is really any different. It's just your imagination. You have the peace. I gave it to you. No one, no thought can take it away. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am not a man who tells lies. Nothing has changed. I am the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Time is the same for me. Is that you? Are you talking to me? Goose pimples on my left side. I am thirsty, Father. I am hungry for your word. I remember talking to you when I was in bed in Holliston asking for protection for my family. I am that same little boy now, 67 years later. I've never quit talking to you, but for a little while in the 70s in Valdosta. Give me bread, give me water, Give me words so that I can help people who are down, who are confused, who are hurting. Words that will lift them up. Opening the book. I opened it to Jeremiah 23:19. I guess I was wondering if, if he wants to talk to me. I guess if I open the book, he can talk to me that way. And I have been on a kick lately of talking about these prophets that are out there on YouTube. And they are saying that God gave them dreams and all kinds of stuff like that. And I, don't, I never say it's not true. I just say he doesn't talk to me like that. I feel like he talks to me in thoughts. Sometimes I have a dream, but I have to interpret the dream. It's not anything clear cut. And sometimes I open when I'm perplexed, like I was last night. I will just open the Bible and wherever it opens to, I will read it and see if maybe he's talking to me that way. So I opened it to Jeremiah 23 last night. 
at a few minutes till 12 o'clock midnight. And I read around there. And I think that this may be what he was trying to tell me. This is Jeremiah 23, 19. Behold, a whirlwind, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. A violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. 20. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. I believe this is what he was trying to tell me. Because we are in the latter days, and he has stated in this, this is a prophecy that Jeremiah did, I guess 2,400 years ago or somewhere in that time frame. And he says that a violent whirlwind isn't it interesting that we're in a whirlwind right now? That's a hurricane, but this is a metaphor. I don't think it's a real hurricane. He's likening it, likening it to a big storm. And this wind will fall violently on the head of the wicked. And 20, verse 20, the anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. Well, he's admitting right there that this was not a prophecy for back then. You won't know what he's talking about until the latter days. Is this the latter days? Well, it's certainly later than it was when this prophecy was written. Is that what is going to happen soon? And I talked yesterday, I believe, about how Babylon fell suddenly. And how the Egyptians were suddenly visited by the wrath of God. And how Satan himself was set up into causing Jesus to be executed crucified, which also sealed his fate. And I guess the devil didn't understand by infiltrating the minds of the priests of Israel into doing a wicked thing like executing Jesus. So apparently there's going to be something else. You see, that was not the latter days when Jesus was executed because Jesus talked about and gave prophecies about well, how will things be before he came back. Well, he hasn't come back yet. But he's saying there, there will be a whirlwind and the wicked will be violently done away with. Babylon the Great has fallen is one of the other prophecies that is looking forward. The original Babylon fell and the modern day Babylon that is in the latter times is also, my understanding of the Bible is, that it is also going to be destroyed. I have heard that it is going to be a financial destruction, that Babylon is in charge of the fiat money system, which is fake money, a system that the devil invented 
to rob the people. So that all these years since they invented or came up with the Federal Reserve System, it was a big scam, a Ponzi scheme, where they caused and knew that the money would become less, worth less and less, but that the people would have to pay, would not be able to keep up with it. Their wages would not equal the inflation. Well, we can see that's happening. As I told you, I went to Walmart yesterday. And I don't go there, but about once every two weeks to stock up. And I could see a noticeable difference. Well, the believers, I believe, will be protected. The bride of Christ, the brides of Christ, the church, the congregation of believers, I believe, will be protected. But it doesn't mean that there won't be some hard times. And just as Joseph advised the Pharaoh to stock up on supplies, I think that it would definitely be a good idea for us to stock up on supplies. I would do it sooner than later. I would get something, buy something that will, that will stay preserved, canned goods, dried goods, um, and some kind of a way to make sure you have water. And like I said, gardening tools and equipment if you don't already have that. Now, gardening is a specialized, a very specialized skill. Some people have a knack for it and some people don't. Um, it's tough, you know, trying to start from ground zero to, to grow a garden. But if you're inclined to do that, I'd say start now. Now, you know you've got to get your ground ready first. You can't just go out there and plant in the grass. Now, you can plant in containers. Uh, that's not going to produce all that much stuff, but it will produce. Now, you can do potatoes in containers. I'll tell you a guy you need to look at that does container garden gardening on a very skilled level. And his name of his channel is Self-Sufficient Me. He's a guy in Australia that raises things in raised beds, buckets, containers, and, you know, he, this guy here knows what he's doing and he works at it really hard. He's in Australia. Self-sufficient me. If you want to get a, an education in how to grow things in containers. You may have some containers around there that you can use. It would be a start. Chickens are good. Ducks are good. But you got to buy feed for them too, you know, and the feed has gone out of sight. The deep state, the wicked one, he is trying to break our backs. But we have a Savior that has promised to protect us. God has promised to take care of the wicked, then he's also promised to protect his bride. Now that's the way it came out this morning. Uh, we're not having any rain yet. Just a very small amount. Thank you for all the comments. We've had some very excellent comments lately. Everything helps. Everything is good. Everything helps everybody that's trying to keep up with this channel. 
I want to encourage once again any of you out there that are contemplating, witnessing, declaring the name of Jesus, go ahead and do it. Who knows? You may not get a chance again. And remember, Jesus promised that the ones that came late to the harvest would be rewarded just the same. That's because He's a gracious God. He's a loving God. He's a just God. Now, I do want to address one thing that I thought about last night. From time to time, I have people asking me, then they're skeptics. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in the Bible. But they want to argue and they want to say, well, what about the people that have never heard of Jesus, that live in the jungle, or live somewhere where they've never heard of Jesus? Are they going to hell? I don't get in those arguments because I'll tell you why. Jesus is good. He's the only thing that's good in the universe. He is just, and He is love. So I trust that He knows what He's doing. So He's not going to do anything unjust, or not good, or not loving. So I figure He's got it all figured out, and I believe He's taking care of everybody in a just way. Now, I've told you before that, that the people bat that word around, going to hell, you're going to hell, or this or that. And I already said, somebody that talks about going to hell that doesn't define exactly what they mean, I don't listen to them anymore. Because hell in the Bible was translated about four different things. And as far as I can tell, none of them were about hopping around on hot coals for eternity. So when I'm listening to a preacher or a YouTube presenter, if they, if they start throwing the word hell around without giving a very precise definition of exactly what do they mean by hell, I, I click off of them right quick because they're not being precise. They're using that word to scare people. Well, it's, it's a scary thought, all right. But I want them to tell me what they're talking about. Are they talking about the pit? That's one of the things that's translated hell. The grave, that's another thing. What are they talking about? That's just my pet peeve. You want to talk to me about hell, you better tell me what you're talking about. And then I'll tell you what I think. And I'm going to tell you what I think. I can't figure it out. I don't know what it is. But I sure don't want to try it. But whatever it is, I believe Jesus is going to be just in His judgment of people. Because He's good. God only is good. And God is just, and God is righteous, and God is love. We have no idea what love is. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all things will be added to you. And here's another Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. God may be ready to start something new in your life. And I can do all things through Christ. Seek divine guidance. He'll take care of you. Now that's strictly the believers. If you're saying there is no God, and you're saying the Bible is, 
Oh, by the way, the people that are saying, what about the, uh, let's get re circle back. The people that are saying, what about the people that have never heard Jesus and the people that live in the jungle and never heard of them? What they're really saying is, that proves the Bible is false. They're, that's their argument to say, I don't trust the Bible because Jesus, because the Bible says that no man comes to heaven but through him. And they're assuming that that means through the preaching or teaching of Christianity. Well, Jesus can call somebody to come through the door anywhere and at any time for any reason according to what he wants to do. How about a person that can't see, that can't hear, and that can't talk? They don't think that Jesus has got that covered too? He's got it covered. He's God Almighty, the good God. Let's see, I'm probably... I'm sitting out here waiting on this. It's supposed to rain. It's beginning to, beginning to rain now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to wind this up and get on back in the house and get our phone and our camera out of the weather here. What? All right, Debbie. Hurricane Debbie standing right by me. Let's do the Lord's Prayer and go in there and put this on YouTube. Thank you so much for the comments and the encouragement that you give me. But I want everybody out there to get busy in one way or another, if you're not already, and uh, ask God for guidance in that. You'll feel a lot better about it. Everybody, there's something that everybody can do. And God will give you a job. It's not going to be probably one of the big, big shots on YouTube. I'm one of the little shots on YouTube, but I thoroughly enjoy it. And I'm thoroughly uh, thank God for giving me just a little, a little tiny work to do. All right, the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.